In high school wrestling, man, my coach would be like, only fishes get caught in double grapevines. You're a real fucking fish if you get caught. And then this, then the guy got me in a double vape, grape, vape vine. I was like, fuck, I'm a fish. <laughs> hey, listen, every wrestler gets caught in a double grapevine. You've never got so caught in a set. double fucking grapevine, and you know it. I, I got my ass beat in high school my junior year, and a guy got me a double grapevine and actually pinned me. What? Yep. 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 I took third that year. I lost to a guy in the semifinals. He I ended up going on to play football, I think, for the Patriots. I think his name was John Flannery. Uh, he was, a, um, I think, a tight end or a, or a tackle. I think he was a tackle for the Patriots. That's right, because like you won your seat in Pennsylvania. You won your senior year. And you got yes, beat. You got third your junior year. That's one of the questions I was going to ask you is, like, who the fuck beat Kurt Angle his junior year? And the guy <laughs> went on to be – now, could he like today? Could you whip his ass right now? He didn't go on to be an Olympian or nothing like that. Could you whip his no, ass? No, no, no. He, you know what? The, the issue was I only weighed about 195 pounds. I was wrestling heavyweight, and he weighed about 270, and he was just too big for me to handle at that time. I wasn't that experienced at heavyweight. It was my first year wrestling heavyweight. I had like a big um, growth spurt the year before where I gained 50 pounds. So I was a lightweight. I ended up being a heavyweight, uh, you know, the next year. So it was a, as soon it was as he get, as soon as he get on top of you, he could just fucking wear you down, right? I mean, you're just little. That's I mean, what yeah. happened. Yeah. yeah, I kept standing up, and he'd just lift me and plant me down on the mat, and and just uh, 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 what do you call it? Suffocate me. That's what now he was doing. your senior year, what did you rest? You were heavyweight at in Pennsylvania. Your senior yes. year, what'd you weigh? I weighed uh, about two fifteen. Oh, that's still little because it was clear up to two seventy five, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was. I, I, you know, I could always wrestle one eighty five. I just didn't want to. I, I knew I didn't have. To you didn't want to cut. You space. didn't want to cut and had to make yourself throw yeah. up and and fucking do uh, skipping rope with a, a sauna yeah. suit on next to the wood stove. <laughs> yeah, I, did you I know my that. sophomore year i'm a fat ass yes I, but i wrestled 185 my sophomore year i had to cut from like 210 i'd make myself puke and fucking take water pills and all that shit oh you know all the secrets huh yeah we get in we get our little garbage bag suits on and skip rope in front of the wood stove and fucking <laughs> spit and all that bullshit just I stupid know. shit then, you know what? I I never cut weight, Bob. I never wanted to do it. Never, never, uh, never appealed to me. I didn't want to have to lose weight, so I always wrestled the weight I was. Well, that made you tougher, though. I mean, it really did, right? Yeah. When you want, yeah. And you know what? Um, I I the the thing is, I never had to worry about size. I wasn't afraid of the bigger guys, so I, I'd always move up to the next weight class. What's that you know, dog? My, that dog. I hope that dog comes and bites you right now. I hope he does. <laughs> <laughs> hey, my my sophomore year, I weighed one seventy and I wrestled one hundred eighty five pounds. Really? Because my brother was at one sixty seven, I couldn't beat him, so I moved up to the one eighty five pound weight class. Eric. I, I made it to state, but I didn't place. Yeah, Eric did really well his senior year. Now, what now? What could Eric wait? Now, Eric couldn't whip your ass as you went on to college and stuff, could he? No, no. I, I started beating him my senior year in high school when he was wrestling in college. And uh, that's when they, they, my brothers kind of knew, okay, this, you know, little Kurt's actually really special. He's going to do something really great. Oh, he's special. Uh, all right. Special up. fucking Ed. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not really, you're not wrong about that. I'm definitely special. Ed. <laughs> Remember the times back in the day, Kurt, when I used to call and you and Karen would be in bed and you'd fart and do a Dutch oven. Do you remember that shit? <laughs> all right, Bob. <laughs> You're getting it wrong. Uh, no. She would fart. She would fart. Up. She would fart. Yes, yes. I told you that like five times. She Re was nasty, man. Do you remember uh, back in the day when there was we had this shit going on, this angle going on? I'd call you up every once in a while, and we had to with fucking fans believing that I may have got her pregnant at WrestleMania, and it was my baby. <laughs> 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 yeah, that was some crazy shit. Do you keep in touch with her ever still? I mean, you guys got two no, kids together. No. Is that no, heat? Is that heat? Uh, no, no, we just don't talk. You right, know, that's right. Not a big deal. Uh, I moved on with my life. She moved on with hers. Yeah, you might. You got four, like you got like eighteen kids now, don't you, or something like that? <laughs> yeah, I have six. Six that's kids. Including the two I had with Karen. Yeah. Right. Now, what's your youngest? Your youngest to your oldest, Kurt? Nineteen to five. Nineteen, five old, nineteen so. to five. Yeah. Yeah, we, we adopted a kid. He's 18 now. We adopted him when he was uh, 14 and uh, from Bulgaria. 
and uh, he's the second oldest in the family. Now, what is he? Is he in, involved in any sports or anything? You know what? He he didn't make the soccer team this year, so he decided to join wrestling. How about that shit? The last year of his high school career. Eligibility. I joined wrestling his senior year. I was like Joseph, you're probably gonna get your ass beat. He ain't gonna. You're not gonna let he your. You're no not gonna let your kid. You're you not know? gonna let your kid fish out now, are you, Kurt? Come on now. <laughs> no, no. We actually got him uh, wrestling lessons. We get him. We getting a coach. To well, me, no, hold the fuck on. Him. Hold on. Wrestling lesson <laughs> lessons when your dad's Kurt motherfucking angle. How does that work? <laughs> I mean, how well, does well, that work, been, Kurt? If you didn't forget. Over the last five months, I had knee replacement surgery. Oh, that's right. Well, I, mean, so I can't do shit right now, so I had to get him somebody to train him. Did you get a half knee or full knee? Did you get where did you did you get uh, to what'd you get? Both knees, full knee. Oh shit! What both type? The same time. Zimmer, Biomat, Depew. You know, I come well, my hometown, Warsaw, Indiana, is the orthopedic capital of the world where they make all that stuff. Oh wow, uh, that's uh, that's kind of crazy, man. You don't even Indiana. Yeah, Warsaw, Indiana is where they make all the knees and hips, and it's like Biomat, Depew, Zimmer. Those are the big the uh, Medtronics. Those are the big companies. You don't even know the kind of shit you got in you, but I'm just saying. (laughs) Oh, okay. Thanks. Uh, Sorry about that, Bob. Uh, The piano guy just came in. The boy, you live the life of luxury. You even got piano. The piano. (laughs) We got to fucking tune your piano, Kurt. What do you got to (laughs) do? My three youngest kids all take piano lessons. All right, we have to have the piano tuned every week. Hey, I need a favor, okay? And I never ask for a favor. Okay. (laughs) By by the way, I'm ribbing you. This is there's no. I was gonna say, hey, Kurt, you think you can get me into the TNA Hall of Fame? I might be able to no, all the pressure but, got them. No, out. but man, they hate <laughs> Kurt. I was the most hated guy ever, ever, ever there. Yeah, but you gave him not a lot of notoriety. Yeah, I mean, but Kurt, you, know, you talked about it consistently. You, you, yeah, that's that's just you being nice. I was, I, I, I didn't have heat. I had hate. I read this one article where they really hate me, and I was like, I was a Hogan crony, and I was a jobber, and all this bullshit. They really hated me. But you know what, Dixie? I mean, I love Dixie. First of all, Dixie was the best. She gave you a sweetheart. She gave you a sweetheart deal. I think I read, I think I watched an article on you saying that the TNA contract was the easiest contract you ever did. You wrote a number down. They said, no problem. Yep. Yep. It was pretty quick, man. But but remember when Awesome Kong shot on me? Remember when she shot on me? (laughs) Remember? And then everybody always misreports it that I got my ass kicked and all that kind of shit. No, no. And and she. she, It's always bullshit, bro. I can just remember me and Scott Hall were walking back from the back and then Hall, Hall goes, Hey, bro, I didn't see this on the pre-tape shoot. Sh- uh, shoot. I think this is a shoot. <laughs> and, I, and I'm like, so she starts kind of hitting me and shit. But you know what? But if, if Dixie or Hogan or Bischoff or whoever, if they would have made that a shoot and made her wrestle me and then me get fucking me do a job, like a whole, get my ass kicked every time by her, and then we come back and I win with a double fuck you DQ match, don't you think that would have been big? Yeah, we got some heat too, man. Oh, I mean, remember when Bobby you'd Riggs? Have to have, you, you'd have to have the payoff though. Kong would end up having to beat you eventually. Oh, I, I'd have to get, I'd have to take him clean, like most yeah. of the time. And then when I did win, if I did, it'd have to be a fuck job. If I won, you know that. <laughs> Right. You know, but yeah. And then when Mick Foley, when they were saying, you know, I was bad, they were getting rid of me. You remember, do you remember Mick Foley was leaving and he fucking hit, hit me in the face? Yeah, yeah, I remember that. And then, and then all the marks are like, "Oh man, that was a fucking shoot hit." And Matt just really showed how much everybody hated Bubba. The makeup bitches came in and spray painted my nose all bl- you know brown and shit. But everybody thought everybody thought it was a shoot, and and it was just uh, fucking crazy. Bubba, you're a heat seeker, man. <laughs> oh, I, I am, and I can't even get into some of this shit. But I can't believe you're talking to me because I like everybody hates me, and they don't even. But I'm just gonna let you know, man. I got. <laughs> I, I, you know what? I need to get your number privately because I got some kayfabe shit to tell you that I can't tell right. you. That I can't tell you here, but I think that you would find exciting. But uh, you know what else? What's going on in the Kurt Angle world? You got two knees. Are you still working yeah. for Vince in the in the manager deal? Yeah, I signed a nostalgic contract, which is basically just a, a merchandise contract. Right, right. And I do appearances for them, so they pay me per appearance and. Uh, they gave me a really nice deal with the merchandise contract. They gave me a bunch of money up front, which is really cool. Uh, but but I, I'm not obligated to uh, 
just the WWE so I can go do my own appearances and stuff. So uh, it gave me a little leeway to do, you know, other things other than, you know, just being WWE. Uh, they've been really good to me uh, thus far. I've been doing a lot of uh, production stuff with them, um, uh, possible TV shows and uh, just some doing behind the scenes stuff, which is kind of cool. Yeah, it is. And you know, Vince always, I mean, you put Vince through hell. You did. I mean, you put, I mean, at one time <laughs> yeah. you used to get so fucked up on perks that you would tell Vince you were going to kick his ass and, and all this yeah, kind of shit. Yeah. And then if I remember one time, if I remember right, it could be wrong. Vince, you, Vince, it was Vince, Johnny Laronitis and Shane and you, and you were fucking gorded out of your mind. And you, you went in to ask for your release or some bullshit, and Vince got up and said, since you want to kick my ass so bad, let's go. And yep. I guess like a couple nights before, you'd black the fuck out and challenge Vince to fight, and Vince was yep. going to fight your ass right there, wasn't he? <laughs> yes, he was. He got up, took his jacket off, and said, let's go. And I was like, holy shit, I feel like I'm going to fight my father. <laughs> right, and I mean, you know. So I got up and left the room. Yeah, just because that would have been bad for you. I mean, you know, you can't shoot yeah. on Vince. No, no, and I, I would never do that. I have way too much respect for him. Um, you know, I, I the thing is, I was struggling with the painkillers. I was getting injured quite a bit. And uh, I kind of uh, lost my relationship with Vince. Uh, yeah. Where he was distancing himself because I was getting myself into trouble. And uh, so I kind of started lashing out to him, which was wrong for me to do. But, um, you know, I was just trying to... Uh, well, no, it was also when you were, so like, Gordon out of your mind. Like, I you know, I think I remember seeing something where you were like, listen, a lot of the wrestlers would get high and go out there and work. I, oh, I never got high when I worked. I always, you know, if I was in pain or I was struggling through some type of injury, I always took what I was prescribed. Now, afterwards was a different story. You'd go absolutely fucking crazy, yeah. and then that's yeah. when you would get yourself into trouble. And But you knew that. Yeah. You knew that. And, and Vince at that point, uh, you know, recognized, hey, we got to get Kurt some help. And I think that was kind of like when you kind of started to turn your shit around a little bit. Yeah, it was. Uh, you know, Vince uh, offered rehab to me when I asked for my release. And uh, I refused it, which I should have went. Um, I ended up going like seven years later. <laughs> it took me a long time. I mean, I got the TNA and, uh, you know. Oh, that, uh, whole, that was a whole, like a that was a whole party in itself. That was a painkiller fucking oh, potpourri. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, I got my painkiller problem under control, but I switched to alcohol. I started oh. drinking excessively. And uh, I would literally, I got so careless and irresponsible, I was driving from one town to the other after a show to go to the, the town the, where I'd perform the next night. And while I was driving, I drink my 12-pack of beer, and it got me four DUIs in five years. I remember one was in I Texas. My reputation, everything I worked for was gone. Texas, Virginia. Uh, North Dakota. I can't remember the other place. I know one it thing. Was, it was I know one thing. Yeah, some... I'm surprised Dixie uh, didn't fire me. I, well, she's an angel. Well, you had some good ass lawyers because I got a lot of that shit got dropped too. I'm just telling you, you had some good. Yeah, ass. got reduced. Yeah, to reckless driving. You're the king of reduction, my friend. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, it was bad. It was bad. I, you know, I they the first one I got, I should have been reprimanded, and uh, but unfortunately. Uh, uh, because I didn't get uh, caught for a DUI, I continued to do what I did. Dixie I was so cool, though, man. Dixie, you know, because Dixie didn't really help by just being cool to you. You know, if she would, if she would have put her foot down and said, "Listen, Kurt, you fuck up. You need to get some help." But Dixie just loved you so much because when they brought you in, that was like, man, we're really getting a big score here with Kurt Angle. Nothing against Dixie. I'm yeah. just saying she didn't help manners by just letting you keep partying. You know. No, but what she did do, uh, WWE offered me rehab, and she allowed me to go, and she gave me all the time in the world to to get better, and uh, she literally paid me my paycheck. I remember one time I I um uh, I was out for ten months. I had my knee uh, my uh, knee replaced, uh, my uh, ACL on my knee, and I was out for nine months. She paid me my full contract the whole year. She was the she best. She never reduced the money. She never stopped paying me. Yeah, she was the best. She plus, treated me really well. Plus, she was, I mean, I'm not trying to be inappropriate or not, <laughs> but Dixie was hot as fuck. I mean, she was hot, she was Kurt. Very pretty woman. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. Now, you know, you hear rumors about wrestlers being with her. That's all bullshit. Yeah. And she I wasn't going to, I wasn't even going to go there because I knew it was bullshit. And you know what? That's yeah. just people wishing because, my God, she was, <laughs> I mean, she was, I was sitting in the makeup chair next to her one time and, and I was like, my God, she's hot. I mean, she was she's an attractive she's a lady. Pretty girl, yeah, pretty woman. Now, yeah. now, now, Kurt, did you ever wrestle Bruce Bumgardner? 
Yes, I trained with Bruce. I never wrestled him in a real match. Because he's, he from, Indi- he's from Indiana State, and he was like, yes, that's where was. I went to school, and he was always like the, you know, he's like the the, uh, the god. And how did you ever do against him? Uh, Bruce whooped my ass. He um, did? I, yeah. Be, well, I, I, you know, when I, when I wrestled in the Olympics, I weighed about 200. Right. So I, I, I was uh, really light for my weight. I, you know, I could have dropped the 198, but I figured I could win the Olympic gold at 220. So what's the, why even lose the weight? So right, might as well just be a I, fat I, ass I and eat the buffet. Quite a bit. Well, I said, yeah, just, well, I mean, I mean, all the other Bruce was doing. all the other wrestlers are over there. You know, all the wrestlers are making themselves puke, and you're over there getting thirds, right? <laughs> hey, listen, I was, I was, he he weighed like 300 pounds. Right. So when I'd wrestle, he would just outpower me, and uh, you know, I would go up there and train at Edinburgh University where he coached, and when we'd have dinner, this guy would eat three 16 ounce steaks, and he would eat all the fat and gristle with it. Right. I and mean, it was like crazy how much he ate. It was ridiculous. Could he just throw he would you? Have heavyweight camps there, and all the heavyweights would eat all these steaks and just eat all the fat and gristle that was uh, included in it. It was ridiculous. But but wrestling him probably made you a, even more more of a stud. I mean, I mean, you're re- yeah, wrestling with a guy that's a hundred pounds more. That's a fucking yeah. stud. Yeah, he was the best heavyweight in the history of wrestling. I mean, he 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 was the guy. Uh, you know, he was a four time Olympic medalist, yeah. two time gold medalist. <laughs> Yeah, he had an incredible uh, career. How would Brock? I mean, how would Brock do against him? Just get smoked? I mean, it's a different league. It's different stuff, right? Uh, you know what, Brock? Brock's so explosive. I don't know. Uh, I, I I will say this: uh, Brock's such a badass. I think he would have done pretty well. Right. I don't think he would have beaten Bruce. I think that he would have done fairly well against him. But there's another guy that I I, I believe that would probably have beaten Bruce, and that was Carlton Hasserick. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of him. No, I never had him. He. Uh, he was a three-time MCWA champion. He didn't play uh, high school football or college football, and he got drafted in the uh, in to the Steelers and became a three-time All-Pro football player. Wow! And he never played football day in his life, which is ridiculous. But um, that but he guy still got drafted. Would have given Bruce a run for his money. I, you know, and I'm not even gonna get through because you've told the story on my show before that you and Brock tied up in the ring. And I've had and, I, and I've had Briscoe tell me the story before, and I know it drives you crazy. It's the first question that every Mark asks, and and, I, and I've heard it yeah. from you. I've heard it from Jericho. I've heard it from Jerry. You know, and uh, but you know, I I did hear this that you could have taken him down and let him back up fifteen times in a row if you wanted to, because <laughs> he was infamous for this big double leg shoot, and he just knew he couldn't get that on you. So, but I think yeah. I've also heard that he did pretty, like, it was pretty, it was pretty tight. It was a pretty tight deal. Yeah. Like, I mean, he didn't, you didn't, you didn't clean him. I mean, he, you did, he nope. did pretty good. Yeah, you do your good, you do your research, Bubba. Well, no, and I, <laughs> and I, I, and I know you too. Yeah, and I told you that. I, yeah. I, you know, Brock and I, it wasn't like I crushed him. I, I beat him, but it wasn't like soundly. No. It was, I, I had two takedowns. He didn't have any. And we wrestled for 15 minutes. It was just, it was a tight match, but Brock Brock is really explosive. He's one of the best athletes I've ever been in the ring with. I mean, he's a, an amazing athlete, and he's big. Whatever isn't he, he just does, big, isn't he just fucking huge? Yeah, and he's fast, explosive, just a great athlete, especially for his size. Is he mean? Who's the meanest guy? The straight Brock, me- Brock, Brock's pretty damn mean. Yes, yeah. he's, he's a tough son of a bitch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, he 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 wasn't UFC champion for nothing. Wasn't Arn Anderson real mean back in the day, Arn? Arn? Arn was a badass, yeah. Arn was pretty pretty tough. Uh, I, at least that's what I heard about him. Uh, I, I know that nobody wanted to mess with him. Now, now uh, Kurt, I'm going to ask you, what, was that Daniel Pewter deal? Was that a shoot? I mean, was that, was yeah. that, I mean, was yeah. that a shoot? I'll tell you what happened. Well, they, they want us to wrestle. It was supposed to be a wrestling match. Right. Daniel got me in an arm bar and was trying to make me submit. It wasn't, it wasn't a UFC fight. It was a wrestling. Right, it was a folk so style wrestling when, deal. Like, 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 a, yeah. you know, collegiate folk style wrestling deal. What in UFC? Yeah. yeah. So I, I, I attacked him and I got him up against the ropes and he was using the ropes. He was holding on to the ropes. Right. And I couldn't pull him off. And he, he really quickly got an arm bar on me. And then I lifted him up in the air and took him down and he, he had me in the arm bar. But the thing was, he was on his back. So I'm pinning him, and he's trying to make me tap out, and the ref counts one, two, three. He pinned himself. I, well, so when he got up, I said, you know, you're a stupid son of a bitch. And I also said, heard – talking about? I also um, heard the boys in the back, though, were real – I heard I – mean, I mean, you might be able – I heard the boys in the back 
uh, Eddie and some of the boys when he when he wrestled the Rumble then that they pretty much fucking laid the hammers on him because it just kind of kind of kind of broke happened, he kind of broke kayfabe a little bit. Yeah, what happened was, um, you know, when he got in the armbar, I broke my neck like three months prior. Right. So my my I couldn't do three push-ups. I had no strength in my upper body, so my arm was vulnerable. And uh, I shouldn't have been in that position wrestling Pewter or any of those other guys from Tough Enough. And um, when I did it, uh, th- th- that's the reason why he got me the arm bar. But um, afterward, what happened was he started getting really arrogant and like telling people he's in the main event at the Royal Rumble because he was going to be in the Rumble. Right. He thought he was in the main event. Right. Main event. Right. right. Meanwhile, he's not, he's not even a wrestler yet. <laughs> And uh, the guys heard about that. Oh. Like, okay, this kid's an asshole. So at the fir- at the Royal Rumble, they made sure the first three entrants or the first four entrants were Pewter, uh, Eddie Guerrero, Chris Benoit, and Bob Holly. Oh, yeah. So when Pewter went in, Eddie went in and started chopping the shit out of him. Yeah, shoot. Benoit came in and started chopping the shit out of him. Bob Holly went in and started chopping the shit out of him. They beat the crap out of this kid and threw him over the top rope and he was done. And you know what? His career never got better after that. <laughs> now, did Ta- was Taker around back then? Because Taker usually wouldn't put up with any of that shit. You know, Mark. No, uh, Taker was there. But, you know, the thing is, what, what Daniel did to me, it wasn't his fault. He just didn't know it was supposed to be a wrestling match. He just thought he was going to, you know, try to make me tap out. And, and yeah, but his attitude, but his attitude thereafter, he could have been a hell of a lot more of a baby yeah, face yeah, back. You know, I mean, if he would have, if he would have begged, if he would have begged off the deal and been cool, you know, and been like, "Hey, Kurt, man, I didn't even fucking know. I, you know, listen, I'm sorry, bro. I didn't even know that we were like not UFC in it. But you know, you know, yeah. then the boy, then, then you know, the, that, yeah. and the boys always take. It, it's you know, the boys are always keeping score in the back door. Are they not? They always are keeping score in the yeah, back. You get yeah, some guy do. out there. You know, like when Jericho fucking, what was it, Jericho beat, uh, who the fuck did he stretch? Um, fuck, Jericho, who, uh, Goldberg. Didn't Jericho stretch Goldberg. Goldberg back in the day? Well, they got in a little altercation, and uh, Goldberg went to double leg Chris, and Chris got him in a choke and started choking him out, and, and somebody, somebody broke it up. So there was no choke. It's just he got him in that position, had him kind of stalemated, and uh, somebody broke it up, so it was it was a really quick fight. Nothing, nothing crazy. How's Triple H doing nowadays? I, mean, I know, I know that you know Vince. Oh, he's doing great, man. I I, I actually really like Triple H. He's he's uh, done a great job with the company. Um, you know, uh, I I honestly thought Vince was still working behind the scenes. Yeah, he's not. He, he's he's gone. They actually uh, made him give back his uh, uh, company phone, cell phone. See, I think I have no way of getting in touch with Vince. I'm going to be honest with you. I think that I think that they kind of chicken shit at Vince. I think I really think that Vince got the fucked into the deal of that deal. I mean, I'm not saying that I'm not going to get into all that shit, what happened. But I, I mean, here's a guy that, you know, put basically built all of this from his creative mind, you know, I just every from you to Hogan to the Taker to just you know to to Cena to all the big to the Rock, everybody ha- owes a lot of of that to Vince, and I I, I just do. I just think it could have gone uh, the exit pattern could have been a little more classier for Vince. I think that they kind of fucking they kind of buried him a little bit. Yeah, unfortunately, but you know, at the same time, you know, Vince made a few mistakes. Yeah, and, he did. He did. Uh, you know, the thing is, you know, Vince, I love the guy. I have so much respect for him and what he's been able to do for the business. And he's a great human being. He just, you know, sometimes he got a little out of control and, you know, that's what happened. Yeah, you know, but in, it's in good hands with Triple. I know Triple H, I think, is is head of kind of kind of what Vince, like creative or talent. And I mean, you talk about a mind for the well, actually about- Nick Khan. Nick Khan's the CEO. Oh, okay. But but Triple yeah, H is yeah. like head of talent or something, isn't he? Yes, he is. And Shawn Michaels came in. He's the head of creative. Uh, 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 Road Dog came in. Now DX is running the show. <laughs> oh shit, we're <laughs> all they're, fucked. They're, they're, they're the top three guys <laughs> in the company. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. you know, you talk about three guys that really know the business, the philosophy oh, and the yeah. bu- the oh, philosophy yeah. of the business. You know, they're not gimmick guys; they're old school. I mean, Triple H was a fucking unbelievable worker. Unlike you, bag full of yes, hammers. That's what Hogan called used to call you, bag full of hammers. <laughs> goes, That's because I stiffed the shit out. Oh, he, Hogan used to be so mad at you when it, when I was hanging yeah. out with Hogan. He'd be like, "God damn, that guy's a stiffy. What the fuck? He needs to slow down." 
Slow down, yeah. Kirk. We're going a thousand. Hogan said he used to get out of the ring to have to slow it down. You'd be going a million miles an hour, throwing hammers, spuds, everything. And he said, I'd have to get out of the ring and regroup because that guy's so stiff. Yeah, and I, was, I was pretty intense, man. And you're so fast. Those old timers work slow. I know that one time you worked the taker and you had to say, man, I had to slow it way down. I had to get the philosophy down. They, uh, These guys all have, you know, they're, they're going somewhere with this. And Kirk just wants to go in there a thousand miles an hour, like, like a million yeah. miles. It took me a while to slow down, man. It, it, not until I got to TNA did I start slowing down. Yeah, well, you didn't and even. I really you, a lot better. You slew down on the ring and you and you sped up in life uh, on TNA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, I did. Out of control. Yeah. You know, with this, with with the NFL and the concussions and all that, can you only imagine the concussions? I know that Triple H gave you one in the pedigree for sure one time, but I mean, you probably. I mean, God, I mean, just taking a hard bump or anything like, I mean, can you imagine how many concussions you may have suffered? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's either three or four that I know of for sure. Uh, I don't know if I did it any other times, but um, I had two back to back, the one with triple H and then I actually wrestled the next night, which is crazy. Uh, back then though, there were, you know, the liabilities were, there, nobody sued anybody back then. No, so it, no. You know, the, the company didn't have to worry. Now they have a wellness policy and a concussion policy. And, uh, you know, you can't do that anymore. You have a concussion, you're out. So I wrestled the next night and I got thrown on my head against Eddie Guerrero and I, I blacked out again. So I know I got two concussions two days in a row. And, and, and so those are the three that you knew of. I mean, in high school or anything like that, or, I mean, you'd really never got taken down. Nobody, I mean, you were always the aggressor. You never were getting, you know, thrown around that way pretty much. No, no, no. Nobody really threw me around. And I might have had one in football. I hit a guy really hard one time. I knocked him like <laughs> I knocked him on his ass and uh, it rung my bell too, man. <laughs> I didn't get up either. You were <laughs> we line were you a linebacker, Kurt? <clears throat> yeah, linebacker and fullback. I, I played both ways. I'm gonna mention some names and just right off the top of your head, I just want your first reaction. Just your first reaction, okay? Okay. Jericho. Uh, best in the business right now. Nash. Uh, love the guy. God, don't um, you, I love Big Sexy. He's just. Oh, my God. He's the most likable guy I know. <laughs> if you don't like Kevin Nash, even though he's so he's big, solid, he is. Yeah. He's so, that's the word. Solid. Kevin Nash yes, is solid, he is. and he's all about business, and, and, and it's about what makes money and what's the biz. You know, him and Taker are, are kind of very similar in the fact that, like, what's business-wise what makes sense, you know? Yeah, and they're smart about it. They they know how to make it work. Yeah. Cena. Cena, uh, greatest uh, WWE superstar of all time. All time. Period. Yep. Yep. He has. He's the one with sixteen world titles, all WWE titles. Rick no Flair. No one else has done that. Rick Flair. Um, what, the greatest of all time overall entertainer. Uh, The Rock. The Rock, uh, he's up there too, man. Well, he has taken well, hey, he has money. taken money to a whole new level, yes, hasn't he? he? Has. Yeah, he owns everything now. God love him <laughs> I'm too. Surprised he's not running for president. You know what? I wouldn't be surprised. I'm gonna be hitting. He probably win too. You know that? Yeah, yeah. You know what though? He said uh, two days ago. He said he's not going to run for president. So no, he was considering it, but uh, yeah, not but anymore. But deep down, man, who would want that job? Everybody hates you. I mean, you oh, can't. I mean, God, God. I, I would never wish to have that job. I think it's the worst job in the world. Last one, Shawn Michaels. Oh God, Shawn. Um, he has the best chemistry with every wrestler. Uh, I've had my best matches with Sean. Everybody has their best match with Sean Michaels. That's how good he is. He just put, he just knows how to put you over, man. Right. I mean, he can just, yes, like... he does. Yes, he does. He knows the business better than anybody. So, you he know, sells better than anybody. He works better than everybody. He, he entertains better than everybody. He's just the best. Um, you know, I, I don't know if they if you learned this in Pennsylvania high school, you know, their guys are a little slow over there. But, you know, Mount Rushmore has <laughs> has four presidents to it. You know that four? Yes. OK, so if I was going to say Kurt Angle, who is your Mount Rushmore of wrestling? Oh, God, you know what? I uh, can only go by the people I've wrestled. True. OK, uh, not not people in the past like right. Andre the Giant or, right. or Bob Backlund. Um, I would say Ric Flair. Uh, Shawn Michaels, um, Triple H, and Undertaker. The Taker. He's the best. Yep, Taker's always up there, man. And, and Now, listen, my, my, my Mount Rushmore changes every week. I'm just telling you the truth. <laughs> 
Yeah, it's by whoever, so, whoever's you know calling you and, and doing nice things for you. Whatever Buddha, man. <laughs> how about how about Stone Cold? Austin, that's that, you know it's hard to pick four because Austin. What what amazed me about him? He was the best in ring general I've ever been in the ring with. He could change things on a dime and go a different direction and go back to the normal spot we were going to go to eventually. He um, had the best knack for the business. He was the best leader in the ring that I've ever been in the ring with. Now, when you would, Triple when you would wrestle those guys, now, as you went on to have an illustrious career, you got to be one of those guys. But before mm -hmm. you were one of those guys, and you were just mm -hmm. Kurt bag full of hammers and come rolling mm -hmm. in there, would those guys call the match? Or would, yeah. would I mean, they absolutely would call it, right? Oh, well, keep in mind, Bob, I, I started, I only trained for seven months. No, I know. I got on TV. I, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. You didn't even the know, like, you know, TV. back in the day that yeah. where they would, you know, the baby face, the heels would call the match and the baby face would go, yeah. or they'd go locker room to locker room and not even like be true kayfabe and not see each other. Like you didn't go through right. any of that shit, did you? No, no. But, but I, I had to, you know, I learned on the fly. So these guys had to call it a ring. And the more I learned that, be, uh, listening and following the more I became a better leader. And uh, so I learned from these guys while I was on the job. I was learning on the job. Yeah, but you were trained. I think you were trained by one of the Funk Buddies b brothers, weren't you? Yeah, Dory Funk. Yeah. Uh, but it, we, he only trained me for 15 days. That's um, it. He, five days a month for three months. Enough to hit it. the ropes and do a bump and, and, and learn a yeah. of fucking how to throw a boot. And that maybe was the a... end of the Dory Funk Jojo. That was it. Three months. It was done. Here, Kurt, you hope, when you hit the ropes, you put your, uh, you put your uh, uh, arm up so you don't, uh, you know, you, and you, it feels like you're breaking your ribs the first time you run the ropes. People don't even have any idea. Oh, yeah. It hurts like a son of a And then, you're, then you do I a bump. I oh, I know. The ropes. It's like, man, my fucking ribs hurt. Man, what the fuck? You know? <laughs> And then if you didn't Bruce hit him, all over if, your back if you ribs. didn't hit him hard yeah. enough, you're like you're not hitting him hard enough. And then when you did your bump, <laughs> if you didn't throw your arms back enough or practically concuss yourself, then you weren't doing that right, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It so was, it was, it's a tough business, man. So who was the very first old timer? Like like you know a, like Flair, you know a Taker, Shawn Michaels. Who was the first one of those guys you worked? Um. I would say Taker. Taker was one of the, I, I worked him within the first three months I was in the business. And uh, so Vince was putting me in great uh, situations where I was uh, being in main event matches early on in my career, which level uh, made me. Oh uh, yeah. Jump just per just propelled quickly. you. But Taker first match I had with him though, was a crush match. He just kicked my ass and pinned me. It was like five minutes long. Did <laughs> you guys lock up it, and he it, just say, watch the boot. Here it comes. Or like, <laughs> how did it go? Yeah. Pretty much, pretty much. That was it, man. But being in the ring with him was a big deal for me, and it made me more popular and bigger. Oh, it's the rub. So, you, I mean, you got you got the rub. Yeah, you know, you got the rub, yeah. and you get the taker rub, and then and so I mean, and then boy, what? And I'm sure you were introduced first, and then here he comes, and he has probably, arguably, one of the greatest entrances of all times. Period. Oh God, man! Oh. Listen to this. I remember Royal Rumble 2000. Uh, it was uh, 2006. I was world champion and Taker came out at the end of my match when I beat Mark Henry for the world title. And he came out. It was the first time he was Undertaker from the American Badass. Right. His first appearance. I literally almost came in my pants when his entrance started. It, it was like, holy shit. I, I had chills going up and down my spine. I mean, this entrance is so dramatic and so real. And, you know, and then he did like, he did like his magic where he, electricity where they where he uh made the lights go out and then the ring imploded fell i was in the ring and i fell with the ring it was the coolest entrance that i've ever seen i mean had you beat before you even walked in you're like fuck let me lay yeah. down here let me <laughs> let me lay down here yeah. who, who but you know what i beat him that month you went you went over that day. night yeah, yeah. How, how'd you how, how'd you how'd you go over what was the finish um, he had me in a submission hold, a choke hold, and I flipped over and pinned him while he had me in the hold. So it, it protected him because it, he didn't know he got pinned, and I I actually snuck a pin on. Him. So it was like a little bit of a little bit of a fuck job kind of deal. Yeah, yeah, it was just to protect Taker because you know you don't. Oh yeah, you can't. Plus, job. plus Taker. I mean, let's be honest. Everybody I ever spoke to. Even when, even when I, even when Hogan was there towards the latter part of his career, Taker ran the dressing room, like right. I mean, yes, he did. Taker ran it. I mean, like, yeah, he was the leader. 
You mean the whole time I was there, he was a leader. Yeah. Yeah, like I mean, you know, taker. What ta- I mean, if there was a dispute or some shit going down or the way to do business or somebody was getting a little bit cocky, man, fucking Mark stepped in and and put that guy in his place. And it was always on what was best for the business, not egos, not, it was what was best for the brand always. Yeah. Taker was the leader. You're absolutely right. What's he, what I've seen him do a lot of podcasts and he's doing a lot of great stuff. Yeah. You know, he still has a contract with WWE. They, they take care of him and they, they, you know, he doesn't, do many appearances i mean if he does he has to get paid a lot of money yeah well he's like i heard it's over over six figures like fuck, his, yeah. his demand for his autograph because he never does them is so rare that uh they he can ask for all that money it's incredible he used to come on my show a lot when he was when he lived in tampa like well, a lot of the boys back in the day lived in tampa because it was like for some reason i don't know why but tampa was like the place to live because it was quick to get in and out of the airport and stuff like that. And Taker lived here with Jody. I think I might have been his first wife. Uh, and yeah. uh, and uh, he was he used to just kind of show up on the on the show every once in a while. What a great guy! What a what a great yeah dude. yeah. He is a good guy. He's a solid individual. I I love Taker. I loved him like a brother. He was he was one of the coolest guys I've ever met. And he and, always uh, took care of you in the great. ring too, right? I mean, like you know, he, that tombstone yeah, that tombstone yeah. wasn't that bad, was it? never dangerous he he never did anything that would um injure anybody he was always uh very safe hogan always claimed that taker spotted him on the tombstone in detroit but t- I- i've watched it and and i've seen taker talk about it and taker was like man that's just hogan being hogan you know coming up you know f- with some kind of bullshit and i watched it and and taker took care of him i've never known taker to not take care of everybody on a tombstone yeah, you could probably see if the Hogan's head hit the mat or not. So yeah, he yeah. Probably, Hogan probably Hogan probably back. needed fucking three days off to go see Nick's soccer game or some bullshit, and Vince believed it. You know that. <laughs> oh, hey, now speaking of which, who Kurt? Now you. Every time I ask anybody, from Edge to everybody, says you're the stiffest. Like you're just that's just your. Who was the stiffest uh, to you? Benoit. Yeah, Benoit. Chris Benoit. He he had some stiff chops. I mean, they hurt like a son of a bitch. Uh, but but he everything he did was stiff. I, I was stiff, too. I I wasn't uh, dangerous. I was just stiff. But, you know, it worked for me. I liked it. Well, stiff looked, you know, stiff, stiff looked, with me. and stiff looks good, too. Like, I mean, you know, yeah. st- like for the first 10 rows, if you go to a match sometimes and you're watching a couple old timers out there, you can see them taking care of each other. You know that. But when Kurt Angle comes in and you're sitting in row 26, man, you can see that this shit ain't fake. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was I was known to be pretty stiff. <laughs> you know, I was looking through your uh, quickly before I let you go, Kurt. I know you're busy, but I was looking at you at, at who beat you your your junior and at the NCAA's. I think you did. You win in oh, I think you uh, won in ninety was, and or some you two of the three years and one year you 90 got ninety and ninety two. Yeah, what, what happened? happened was, okay, I I, I had an all star match my junior year. I was undefeated. I was on an undefeated streak for my sophomore year through my junior year. And I wrestled a kid named John Llewellyn. Um, and uh, what happened was I was winning with five seconds left, and the referee called me for stalling, which they weren't supposed to do. The last 20 seconds, they decided not to call stalling anymore. But this referee wanted to stick me. So he called stalling and uh, gave the other wrestler a point, and it tied it up. We went to overtime. And when I got into overtime, I, I, I was exhausted. You were blown I, up. I actually, yeah, I went I, – I, I was hanging on and trying to win this match. Right. And uh, so when I, I attacked him right away, he just spun behind me and won. And um, so I ended up uh, going back to Clarion and training. And I was training like I was really pissed off that I lost. So I, I was training half ass and I blew my knee out. So I ended up not wrestling until the qualifiers for the Nationals. And I barely won those. And I went to the Nationals. I had to have knee surgery, but I, I had a knee brace on. So I went to the Nationals and wrestled as much as I could to see if I could make it through to the finals. I made it to the finals, and I wrestled the same guy, John Llewellyn. And uh, he beat me. He, uh, I just couldn't, I couldn't beat him with a one leg. And uh, so that, that I ended up with two losses that year. And uh, that is the bitterest moment of my career leave it to uh, me leave it I'm to me leave it to me to bring the bullshit up sorry kurt <laughs> yeah, yeah no that's all right because my senior year i went undefeated again so if i wouldn't have lost that all-star match i would have probably went 
uh, 120 straight wins in my career in college. But unfortunately, I, I lost that match. And uh, that, that did a domino effect for my junior year where everything fell apart. Am I the only guy ever to ask that question? Yes. <laughs> Really? Never had anybody go into detail about it. Of, of course, I have it in my book. But, uh, no, I know that. No, I, I, ever... I was just looking at the stats. I'm like, well, how the fuck do you win your your sophomore year, lose your junior year, and then win your senior year? So I was like, I didn't know. I didn't see the book. So I was just like, well, you know, maybe some, you know, maybe some shit went down because you know, and and so I I wasn't trying to bring the the low point of your career up, my friend. No, no, you know what? It doesn't bother me anymore, but it did for a while. How's Edge? You ever uh, see one Edge? Of those things that you regret. You ever uh, see Edge? Who? Edge. Yeah, yeah. I, I just saw Edge. I was uh, on TV for WWE on Raw about a month ago. We were in Pittsburgh. They were in Pittsburgh, and I came down and did a skit on TV, and I I, I did a, a pre-tape with Edge. And uh, man, he the kid is doing incredible. I mean, he's almost fifty years old. He's I know. Still at his best. And he's, he's a crazy. fucking and he's a fucking Canadian, so he has every dollar he's ever made. Motherfucker's <laughs> the tightest guy in the world. When he lived in Tampa, man, uh, and he would be like, uh, I don't pay for anything unless I have a, a three times the amount of money in the bank for it. I'm like, man, that's not how us <laughs> Americans roll. We get stretched out till we have no nothing left, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We take loans. Yeah, fuck. We, we we file bankruptcy if we can. Fuck it, you know? <laughs> So Kurt Mandu, listen. So you know, I've I've been part of some shit, you know, and some of it's yeah. true, and there's a lot of it that's not. And and do the, do all the and I know you're my friend. Fuck, I've had you yep. on the air now for 20 years, and and you know yeah. I would I you and you knew when you said yes to this interview that I was not gonna fucking say anything stupid or put you in a bad light. You know that I just I got you, buddy. Yeah. But is it do the boys hate me? Do they hate me? No, no, the boys don't hate you. Yeah, but um, Kurt, I would imagine Hogan does, but uh, well, I don't know. Hogan uh, had, Hogan made about sixty million dollars on that deal. <laughs> I mean, you're absolutely right. I probably got him probably his biggest payday of his fucking career. I'll just say that right now. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I don't know if he he enjoyed the way of the curve. I don't know if it was uh, if it was that was some yeah. hard way juice. There was, but I mean. <laughs> Fuck, I'm the one that got left holding the fucking bag of shit, you know? Uh, yes, you did, Bob, and you probably should have. <laughs> no, no, you know, listen, rightfully so. You know, I mean, I participated in, you know, I, I, I'm I, not trying to say I didn't participate in my end of the deal, but fuck, I wish I would have, you know, I just, I, one of these days I need to talk to you, you know, because there's some, there's no, just, no, I'll, I'll send you my number, Bob. But uh, I just, I, I just had such a great relationship in the wrestling, well, just with, guys like you and and others and and it's just i feel like we've uh, had a blast bro. we've always talked and yeah. i've always been on your show and i really enjoyed it i, love I know to spend time. And, and you've been yeah. so good to me my friend and i'm so happy to see that you got 14 kids and they're all doing good and <laughs> you're not taking 56 pain pills a day and you got a fucking no hot you got a hot wife who's actually the booker yeah. and will whip your ass and uh and and and, and, and i and i love all of that for you i've really we've really kind of gotten old together except you're doing really really good and i'm just starting to get back on my feet hey you're gonna make it bob you always do you ever make it you down to Florida? Florida? you ever make it down to tampa feet. kurt you ever make it down to tampa yeah yeah i do i do you know what next time i'll give you a call man i'd, I'll, I'll I'd love you my number and I, hey we'll do keep you, in touch you know you know i, I became I'm friends with, a, with you. you know i became friends with a little bit um Who? matt riddle matt riddle good guy man i like him god that guy's a good worker too isn't he he is, he is, man. I can't believe he wrestles in his bare feet, though, man. That's ridiculous. He's he's a fucking Looney Tune too, man. I mean, he is. Yeah, he, he is. is. He's, he and he and the gimp his gimmick, which is really a shoot. You know, his gimmick's really a yeah. shoot. And and, yeah. and he's just, oh my god, I can see where I, I think he's going to be. I think he's tagging with Randy right now, isn't he, or something like that? He was. Randy got injured and Randy had surgery, so uh, he's been on his own now. He's actually wrestling in main events. Uh, they're keeping him up there. So while Randy's gone, they're keeping him moving. So he's still uh, he's still one of the top guys in the company. Good, good. Hey, listen, bud, I'd love to keep in touch with you, my friend. And you know what? Thank we you. We will, brother. Thank you so much for going on, Kurt. It really, I mean, seriously, not a lot of guys will go on with me because I'm the bad guy. And, and I really, I just can't thank you for being, you've always been a friend of mine. And thank you so much. I, I, I really can't explain to you how much, how touching it is to to be able to talk to you, bud. Well, I love you, brother. I love you, too. And uh, I'd like to get your number so we can keep in touch, my friend. 
I'm going to send it to the guy that uh, emailed me. Perfect. Perfect, Kurt. Hey, give all 72 kids a kiss for me, my friend. (laughs) Stay off the pain pills and stay clean, my man. All right, brother. Take care. Bye, Kurt. See you later, buddy. (laughs) Bye-bye. God, I love that guy. Fucking love that guy. What a great guy. There you go. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm out of here.